Hello and welcome back. Today we're doing a bookshelf tour and in order to do that I am standing, my chair that is usually right here is over there, and my tripod is precariously balanced on top of a table because it is a tripod for hobbits. So we're doing a bookshelf tour. This is going to be interesting because my shelves are not exactly in any sort of order that is believable to the human imagination. That sounded weird. So as you can probably kind of see from where you are right now, uh, my shelves are rainbow-ish. I shifted the camera a little bit, so hopefully you can kind of see more of the shelves. There is another one up there that I don't think you can see, and I couldn't really figure out how to get into the frame. I don't know, maybe I can. Let's try. All right, here you can pretty much see the entire bookshelf. And my tripod is currently in a drawer. No, I'm not kidding. Yes, I will try to get pictures. And I went to all of this effort to show you almost the entire bookshelf, and I'm not sure why I didn't just pick the camera up and go like that. <laughs> and now I can't show you the fact that it was sitting in that drawer. They're in color order, which I know some people hate, but I like how it looks in this room. Although, there's the series. So, how should we start this? I, I sincerely hope none of you get motion sickness. Alright, so up here on the very top shelf are the black books. And there's my Marvel um, comic adaptations. They're pretty good. I've read the two Guardians ones and the X-Men one. They're decent. Um, that, uh, C right there is from, I think, Books A Million. On to the next shelf, uh, this starts the blue section, and they are falling, because my, my books are always kind of a mess. Um, here we have, this is the Shelf Love Crate Edition. It's really pretty. This is Beacon Book Box's Court of Thorns and Roses. No, Court of Frost and Starlight Box. It just looks good there. Okay, moving over. There's really not much I can talk about. Okay, I can talk about this guy. This is one of my custom Funko Pops. Uh, there is a video on him, I think, and I will link it down below. This is Maglor Fenorian from the Silmarillion. All the Funko Pops that you see, they're all Lord of the Rings except Toothless. Okay, moving on. Beside Maglor we have, uh, that's just a regular fake right box, and then we have the Hot Topic exclusive Elrond. Uh, moving down, Barnes & Noble Galadriel. Dragonlance, I have heard both really good things and really bad things about that book, so it's one of those books that I think most fantasy fans read it, but they either love it or hate it, so I'm gonna check that out. This is a fake rate book. It's got an embossed cover. It's really good. I ended up with two copies. This one from Owl Crate and this one from Shelf Love. Um, we have Fake Crate's Wicked King box. Um, this is Haldir of Lothlorien, uh, and this is Mithros. Uh, he is that guy's brother. So that dude and that dude are brothers. These are both customs that I made. Um, this is a Nancy Drew comic series. It's pretty good. Um, this is an indie published book. I don't know, the cover is a bit weird. By Legolas. Oops, uh, it's not gonna go back in right now, so we'll just set it up there. Moving on, this was a Barnes & Noble shared exclusive from a convention. Uh, and then Owl Crate Four Dead Queens. Uh, and then this is an Ink and Wonder print. I have this big gap right here because I used to have um, a lamp right there, but I think because I'm running out of room, I'm gonna get one a longer shelf that's the same length as all the others and put it there, so that's why there's that big gap. So our next uh, thing this is a manga series, Bride of the Water God. I haven't read it yet. I started it, but I did love it. This dude glows in the dark. 
and he's kind of closer to my bed than I would like. Um, yeah, moving on. Galadriel, my best friend, gave me for my birthday because she knew I was missing that one. Owl Crate. This is just a comic. It's too tall, so I just lay it sideways. Here's a Fae Crate box. Um, this is the Blood Witch box. This is the Wicked Saints. It's the Owl Crate version, I believe, off the top of my head. Uh, and there are some of my hobbits. Moving down... Oops. Moving down, this is my series shelf, or one of two. Um, everything up there, either the series is like the Nancy Drew one and the Water Guide God one, and they're the same color so I can put them together, or I put them here, because I like to have my series together. This one's out of order. I have no idea why it was like that. There we go. So, Owl Crate Plain Jane, My Lady Jane, all of this. Um, this is the Witchland series, Aragon. I have two copies of the first one, because this is the collector's edition. It's exclusive to Barnes & Noble, I believe. This one is signed and personalized. This one is just signed. I actually found it at a used bookstore, and I had it for like a month before I even realized it was signed. Okay, and then we have uh, the Stalking Jack the Ripper series. I'm getting the Fay Crate box of this series, and 90% of the reason I'm getting the box is because I don't like the covers. I love this part of the cover. I do not understand why James Patterson feels like his name belongs there. His name is almost as big as the author name. And seriously, what did he have to do with that book? So, I just hate the James Patterson Presents. Because these covers are so pretty, but then it says James Patterson Presents. That just seems kind of narcissistic to me. Like, oh yeah, my name belongs in this book, ha ha. I mean, I mean, normal publishing companies don't stick their name that big on the cover of a book. This one's an exclusive edition and it doesn't say Barnes & Noble Presents. So, yeah, I don't know what James Patterson is doing with his life, but I'm not happy with it. This is a series that I really do want to read, mostly because I love the covers. I bought this one, and then I found this one for like $2, and I was like, well, I have to get it, because I knew I had book one at home. Because uh, usually I don't buy the second or third book in a series until I've started the first book. That's why I have so many incomplete series. Um, but they're just such pretty covers, and I love them. This is the Fay Crate Cruel Prince and the Fay Crate Wicked King. And then here we have Owl Crate Cruel Prince and Owl Crate Wicked King. Either Fay Crate or Owl Crate had better do a box for Queen of Nothing because I can't have a mismatched series. That would drive me nuts. So one of them, or preferably both of them, had better provide me with the Queen of Nothing. This is Beacon Book Box. Um, this is their Lunar Chronicles whoops, cover, and I do love it. I love art covers, and I... Oh, that was an awful noise. I especially love that it's going to say Lunar Chronicles across the spines. I love when spines match up and do stuff like that. Okay, moving on. This is some of my Tolkien books, not all of them. I will show you where some of the rest of my Tolkien is in a minute. This is just like the neat paperbacks that kind of fit on the shelf and look good. And then my David Day Tolkien. Um, these are illustrated and they are fake leather, so they have a really nice texture. And this is the Enchanted Fandoms mug. That doesn't belong there. And I just keep some writing supplies in there. And that's Beacon. Moving on, I need to make my tripod shorter. Whee! Short tripod. Okay, I'm gonna set that. That'll sort of work. It's a little crooked, but it's better than me holding it. Let me put Legolas back up. Okay, so 
One Dark Throne, Three Dark Crowns. Haven't read that series yet, but this is another one where I found the second book and I was like, well, I know I'm gonna read it and it was like two dollars and it was a hardcover, so I bought it. Cursed Sea and the Glass Bear. I, I read this back when it first came out. I got an art copy of it and then I got this copy. Um, I got the art from NetGalley and then this came from, I think, Shelf Love and I'm obsessed. And then the Cursed Sea my cousin gave me because I got her hooked on this one. And I still haven't read that yet. Sorry, Gabri. This is another Holly Black series. It's sort of the prequel to The Cruel Prince and the Wicked King. It's really good. And it bothers me that Tide doesn't match Valiant and Ironside. Are you trying to get involved in the video, Mia? Yeah, if you can hear screaming in the background, it's her. She screams. Okay. So, here is... Alright, so here is Dinotopia. Um, it's a really good series. It's got... There's a couple movies based on it, including... Uh, <laughs> I like to say that Wonder Woman is based on it. There's a story to that, and uh, I'll do a video about my Dinotopia Wonder Woman joke thing. Okay, so next we have Shadowscale and Serafina. I originally didn't like these covers. Um, these are a newer cover. The original covers are... give me a sec. Here's the original cover of Shadowscale. And Serafina is that. So these are the original covers, but when Tess of the Road, which is the newest one, uh, came out, they switched to this style. And although I do prefer this style, I want the whole series to match, so I had to get these to match Tess of the Road. And Tess of the... these covers are not available in hardcover, and Tess of the Road is not out in paperback yet, so I'm waiting for Tess to come out in paperback so I can have a matching set. I know I'm I'm picky. And then this is the Chronicles of Narnia. It was actually my best friend's copy of the series when she was a kid. I mean this one um, still has I'm not gonna show you her last name, but this one still has her first name and then weird hearts that she drew on it at some point. And she's not the kind of person to put hearts on things. And she would be so mad if she saw this video and show, saw that I showed you guys that. Next, we have the Crowns of Crosswald series. I love these covers. Uh, book one is Crowns of Crosswald, book two is The Girl with the Whispering Shadow. Um, sorry, my phone vibrated. I haven't finished book one yet, but the author said she really needed people to uh, pre-order book two just to help her because pre-order sales are so important. So I went ahead and got it, even though I hadn't finished book one. And these are really tightly packed in here. Okay. This is another series I haven't read, but both books were a dollar, so I couldn't not get both of them. I think this one's book one. I'm not 100% sure, but the covers are just gorgeous, and they were a dollar. Okay, and here we have, I'm not going to pull them out because you guys have seen the covers of this series a hundred times, I'm sure. Smoke in the Sun and Flame in the Mist and then Rose in the Dagger and Wrath in the Dawn. All of these are by Renea Day. And I have to complain more because A, these covers don't match, Flame in the Mist and its sequel, Smoke in the Sun. But also, why is Smoke in the Sun taller? Look, it's taller. Why? That annoys me. And then we have the Dunharrow King and Arwen. I don't like Arwen, but I want the full set, so I had to get her. The very bottom... Uh, I guess I can show you a little. I'm gonna go ahead and take this thing off its stand. Maybe. Yeah, this isn't happening. It's not coming off its stand. Okay. The very bottom just has some boxes with stuff in it. This is where I store all of my art prints. Kleenex box. My Tribble. 
keep out of reach of Klingons. Do not block ventilation grill. Um, and this box has wax melts, scented wax melts. And then this is where I keep all of my art prints. And they're sort of, uh, these are the trading cards. And I haven't stayed on top of organizing it. I need to do that at some point. Everything from Sugar Bone, everything from Loot Crate. And then I have all of my um, Owl Crate stuff, all my Shelf Love, Fay Crate, Fairy Loot. Everything has its own manila envelope. So that way, if I'm looking for a specific print, the prints are all loose, but like the spoiler cards and the booklets that come go in there. So that's that. And last but not least, we have, this is sort of my TBR card. That's an eye mask that I use sometimes. I don't know why the sunglasses are there. So this is my candles. Pretty much all of my candles came in subscription boxes. And I'm not going to go through and show you all of my candles right now. That would take an entire video unto itself. These are... that's a zipper pouch. It broke. It's the Owl Crate um, Wicked King zipper pouch. I think everybody's bag broke pretty much. And then these are book um, sleeves. Funko, Mystery Box, Lord of the Rings, journals, uh, things to write about, Owl Crate, reading journal. I'm not using that this year. I'm using the Shelf Love one. These are Three Dark Crowns from Shelf Love. You got one random one. I believe I got that one in your box. And then they had a past item sale and I bought the other two. They are keychains, but I took them off the keychain part so I could hang them there. Sweet Sequels sticker. And then this is just all kind of random stuff that doesn't fit anywhere else. I still haven't figured out what I'm going to do. I want to do something with my magnetic bookmarks, but for now they're right there. And this is something I, I should probably get rid of. I think some people would be offended by it, but it cracks me up. It's a Notre Dame catapult that fires many nuns. Unfortunately, the nuns are missing. I don't know what happened to them because I bought this used. So the nuns are missing, but the catapult is still here. And given what happened to Notre Dame, it might not be as funny as it used to be. So that's the bookshelves in my bedroom. Now I'm going to show you the Harry Potter and the Lord of the Rings shelves in the living room. All right, here we go. That, uh, on that black shelf over there, that mess is coloring books. We have far too many, and they've outgrown their shelf. <laughs> uh, so, Harry Potter on the top. This is a box that I made. And then we have our illustrated Harry Potters. Oh, and there's also Spiderwick. This this and these are spiderwick because they just kind of look nice with this stuff um, let me show I made this box and inside of the box is just like loose stuff that I sometimes use for photos so that's what that is I'll put the curl print back later this shelf is an antique and it has glass doors but I'll open them so you can actually see what's going on. Um, these are my mom likes having the Bloomsbury edition. These are the UK editions. These are all of our Harry Potter books and the reason they're in such bad shape is there are original books. Um, so they're the ones that we went to like the last four or five midnight releases. So those are the ones that we got at midnight releases. So they're the ones that we've read however many times. And then just some little figurines. I really love the art style of the really old original stuff from like the first two books. That is my absolute favorite thing. Um, some minis. This castle is actually, I was told for displaying pewter figures, but obviously I don't put pewter figures on it. I found it at a thrift store. And these are some notebooks. My mom, every time she sees a Harry Potter notebook at a um, thrift store, she buys them. This is not all of them. This is one of each individual cover. There are more. Moving down, I'm going to go ahead and take this off the stand.
All right, so moving down, this is the other Harry Potter books. So what was on the top shelf is the books themselves. This is more journals. These are all the same thing. Like I said, my mom really likes journals. And once again, I think there's more of this specific journal floating around somewhere. Another journal. Um, my boxed set of Fantastic Beasts and Quidditch Through the Ages from before Tales of Beetle the Bard came out. I don't know why Quidditch Through the Ages is separate. Fantastic Beasts screenplay, I still need the second one. And then Tales of Beetle the Bard. I would say I got this on release day, but that would be a lie. I accidentally bought it early because I was at the store. It was one of those little stores in an airport, and I bought that. And then right after I checked out, the lady's boss comes running out and yells, Those aren't supposed to be for sale yet! But because they'd sold it to me, they let me keep it. So that's my fun story about Tales of Beetle the Bard. And then this is another thing my mom really likes. The Field Guide to Harry Potter. Harry Potter Muggle's Guide to Magic. I do love the cover of that. Harry, Narnia, and the Lord of the Rings. Frodo and Harry. Harry and History. The Lexicon, Unauthorized Guide to Harry Potter Fiction and Related Materials. Um, mapping the World of Harry Potter. You guys know I love maps. The World of Harry Potter. What's a Christian to do with Harry Potter? The Plot Thickens, Harry Potter Investigated by Fans for Fans. And then over here, page to screen, Film Wizardry, Cinematic Yearbook. The Unauthorized Guide to Crafting the World of Harry Potter and Charmed Knits, an unauthorized knitting book. So that's the Harry Potter stuff, and the very last shelf is Lord of the Rings. And you'll have to give me just a minute, because there's a Lord of the Rings book that should be there that isn't. Okay. Okay, this is... these are card games, these two boxes. Movie Guide, Lord of the Films, Tolkien's Ring, these are all illustrations by David Day. Hobbit Companion, also by David Day. He did those little um, leather-bound books that I showed you. Myth and Magic. This is Making Gollum, how they made Gollum. It's by Andy Serkis, who played Gollum. All the way down at the bottom, these are all just official movie guides and visual companions to the movies. Moving over... I have discussed it before, and I'm sure I will discuss it again. I really do love... Um, parodies. This is the Sodit. It's a Hobbit parody. My other parody looks like it's missing. Yeah, my other parody is missing. I don't know where it is. I have several parodies, but I took them out for a photo shoot and apparently I never took them, put them back. This is, I think, the second U.S. edition of the Silmarillion. It's really old. It has red on some of the pages for some reason. And it was in somebody's library. And then there's the cover. J.R.R. Tolkien, Sanctifying Myth. Uh, Lord of the Rings, uh, Tolkien and the Lord of the Rings Guide to Middle Earth. I love the cover. I think it's supposed to be Rivendell. Tolkien and the Land of Heroes. The Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings, A Reader's Companion. The Road to Middle Earth. Meditations on Middle Earth. Frodo's Quest. The Magical Worlds of the Lord of the Rings, J.R.R. Tolkien, uh, Smith of Wooten Major and Farmer Giles of Ham. That's something he wrote that's not Lord of the Rings. Where's Beowulf? There's Beowulf. Uh, Lord of the Rings, The Rough Guide, Creating Gollum. This is an illustrated version of The Hobbit. Uh, this is, I accidentally ended up with two copies. It's a Hobbit graphic novel. It's really cute. After the King, these are stories in honor of J.R.R. Tolkien. They're by several famous people, uh, and it's edited by Martin Greenberg, who I've not heard of, and it has an introduction by Jane Yolen, who's a very popular author. So, I don't remember who all wrote in this book. Jane Yolen. Jane Yolen, Stephen Donaldson, Terry Pratchett, Robert Silverberg, Elizabeth Ann Scarborough, Paul and Karen Anderson, John Bruner, 
uh, Patricia Killiup, Harry Turtle Dove, Andrew Norton, Charles DeLint, Dennis McKiernan, Emma Bull, Karen Haber, Peter Beagle, that's um, ba -ba -ba, Last Unicorn, Mike Resnick, Jane Yolen, Barry Maltzberg, Gregory Benford, Judith Tarr. So they're all pretty well known fantasy authors. That's pretty. Okay. This is J.R.R. Tolkien's translation of Beowulf. I used it for a class because the author, the professor said we could get any translation that we wanted of Beowulf. I picked the Tolkien one, of course, and it turns out his translation is not super great. Because one of the things that's talked a lot about in Beowulf is the concept of fate. So we were talking about fate in Beowulf. And I raised my, and she had a specific um, paragraph that we were discussing, and I can't remember where it was, and I'm upset about that. But she was talking about how it was like, you know, Beowulf was fated to do this, and he did this because of fate, and yada yada was what the quote said. And I raised my hand, and the professor was like, yeah, what is it, Cameron? And I said, uh, my copy doesn't say fate. My copy says God. And my professor was like, what are you reading? And I said, well, it's the Tolkien version. And she said, you know, that kind of explains it, because Tolkien is super into God. So don't use that for your college classes. <laughs> Moral of the story. This is another companion to the Lord of the Rings. This is the Unfinished Tales. And this, again, this is not all my Tolkien stuff. I have more in the spare bedroom that I'm not really in the mood to show you right now. So. That is a large majority of my books. There's more. And my mom has her own bookshelf. And yeah. So that's my bookshelf tour. Thank you for watching. And don't forget to like and subscribe.